All right, so in the case of um, responsibility, business, obligations, being OGs, what happens when it's your peers that's going in the wrong direction? Case in point, Joel Ortiz and Crooked Eye released a, an album called, I think, the, 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 the uh, Death, uh, not the Death, death the not the Death, the Slaughter House, the Slaughter, Condemn House, something. Something I can't remember. Them. Pardon me, y'all. No, I, look, but look at how Royce is gonna let us sit here and try to remember. Like I know what it is. I just don't want to cut y'all off. That's all. Uh, yeah, I'm, 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 letting, I'm, I'm, I'm letting y'all get y'all shit off. <laughs> it's, but, it's called but, the Rise and Fall of Slaughterhouse. So, rise you. and Fall of Slaughterhouse. Right. Mm -hmm. So, in in that case, how was that dealt with? How was it dealt with? Yeah. Hmm. Which part? I'm talking um, about how 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 was it dealt with on me and Joe's yeah, side? Yeah, where, where do you guys stand now? Um, where I stand is um, they made a decision, mm -hmm. and the, the, the decision that they made um, is it, it's, it's kind of like something that you got to kind of look at from two different angles. One angle is the friendship, and then the other angle is the business side of it. The business that we had um, in place. Because of the decision that they made and the move they made and the nature in which they made that move made it impossible for us to come behind it and do that particular business. Right. We can't come behind, you know, we can't come behind um, you guys announcing to the world that Slaughterhouse is over with and then try to sell a Slaughterhouse fan a Slaughterhouse t-shirt. It's kind of when you make that announcement and then the whole album is kind of about how everything is our fault and, you know, like painting me to look a certain way in order to drive traffic to streaming platforms and everything is kind of at our expense. You made it messy. You divided up, you divided up our fans and the, some people who believe you guys, some people who believe us. You know, I just think once you do that, especially since it's a brand that's been sitting for so long without yeah. any activity, right. I just think that that's, that's what killed it. So, Do you think you, they were trying to bait y'all? I mean, that, I would be, I would be assume, that would be an assumption, you know? Right. I think it's a possibility, you know? I think, I think... Um, was it a discussion? Did you and Joe say, yo, they're trying to bait us to, to, to really go at them? No, I don't remember having that discussion. We, we were too caught up. And just not in disbelief and not even being able to believe that they would make that kind of a move in lieu of everything that was going on. Like we were doing conference calls talking about, you know, future things that we were going to do creatively, mm -hmm. you know, things that we were going to do to relaunch the brand, relaunch did the, the site, relaunch did they merch. Did money, Royce? Huh? Did, 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 is the bottom line is it seems like from the outside looking in like they needed money. Was that a factor in this yeah. whole Cir situation? Circumstances kind of reveal like a lot of things. Like they needed money, right? Okay, well, if they needed money, I mean, what, what's, the, what's the point with that? They're not going to ask y'all for the money, so I guess that they want to put out a project and be men and try to make their money themselves, like go on tour, yeah, yeah. I mean, figure I think, out what they need I to think, figure out. I think that's where, that's where the lines get fuzzy because, yo, Joel and Crook put out the most projects out of anybody in the group since the group has been a group. You right. know what I mean? So obviously them doing music without me and Joe has never been a problem. Is it making uh, uh, money? Uh, 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 That's interesting. Mm -hmm. Because if they're jumping, I'm about to add on what he's about to say. If they're pulling out personal projects, what was the gap between the Slaughterhouse albums? Maybe, maybe that's the biggest money maker. Yeah, maybe We it is. know that that's the no, biggest but, but money I'm maker. Saying, but what's the gap? <laughs> <laughs> hold on, hold on. Go ahead. For them to jump ahead, what was, why didn't you and Joe do it? I know Joe said he didn't like the business model. He didn't. He wanted to control his destiny. But why isn't collectively all four of y'all saying, well, you know, Joel and Crooked is in a situation. Let's come together and make sure they're good. Well, the situation that you guys are talking about, you speaking about the deal that Crooked said he put on the table, correct? Yeah. Okay. Okay, so if the four, if everybody in here, if we're all a group, and I come to the table with a with a business proposition, mm -hmm. and um, let's say let's say it, it doesn't necessarily suit suit everybody's business practices, which we've always ran into that issue with Slaughterhouse. Right. It took us a year to close the Shady Deal. So my job, my a responsibility year. to you as your friend and group member is not to agree to everything that you put on the table. Right. My job as your friend and 
and how I like to handle things is to extend you the courtesy. If you present something and I don't feel like that that's the best way to go, some sort of contingency plan, something, something moving in a better, in a direction other than just no. You right. know what I mean? So if, that, if it was a situation where Crook put something on the table and we just shot it down, then I would understand his frustration. We didn't shoot it down. We just asked questions. We asked the standard questions that you would ask when somebody presents something to you and it's just at the point of conversation until something is on black in black and white on paper as a proposal. It's not even a real thing. So we not even it wasn't even ever, it never was a real thing for us to say no or yes to. We never right. got paperwork or nothing. No, there never was any paperwork. It never got anywhere close to that because the guy who was making the offer the quote unquote offer was, was a guy who I introduced Crooked to, who I did prior business with, who Joe did prior business with. So he's somebody who not only can contact me, he can contact Joe, he can contact Ian, he can contact Keno. He's done plenty of separate business with Keno. And it was a situation that he allegedly had through a, a major, I think it was Warner or something like that. So you know how it goes, man. Like if it's, if it's somebody coming and they're trying to middleman, they're attempting to middleman the situation between us and Warner. A lot of the questions were like this. Okay, well, what would the terms of the deal be? So far, all you guys are saying is that Tony is interested in giving us $200,000 a piece to do an album. And that was what, all they needed to do. What have. I wanted to know was, okay, <laughs> they're going to give us $200,000 a piece in return for what? what what's the right. point? In return for this? what? We're going to we gonna record it in my studio. Are we going to have a recording budget? Am I going to pay for that? Am I gonna, is it going to be in my studio and I'm going to eat the studio time? Because I'm open to that too. Right. But I got to ask. Mm -hmm. When we do Slaughterhouse albums, the majority of the work always falls on me. I need to ask certain questions so I can properly prep, so I can know, because I can talk Joe into doing things. I can tell you right now, Joe's not interested in taking a big ass advance from no fucking record label, especially not from no guy in the, in the, in the middle of a record label when we can go straight to Warner or anybody else. Right. And this is a guy that I did business with who, like, I, yo, to be, to be honest, like, if he say that he's trying to get that kind of bag to us, I'm curious as to what, what the real bag, bag is that is. he can get from Warner for us. Right. Because it's like, when are we going to stop letting these white boys, dollars. when we going to stop letting these white boys just fucking rob us? And just because you mm. in business with him and you got other business with him and you feel like you want to please him and you like doing business with him, that's, that's your right. But I don't, I'm not obligated to have to do that. You know what I'm saying? And right. I'm not even saying no. Nigga, I'm just asking you questions. You know what I mean? Right. Like, I know Tony. You know what I mean? Like yeah. that, that dude is like, he'll rape you if you let him. You know what I'm saying? So Crook got some kind of connection to him. This guy don't like Joe. So, you know, the whole way that they framed it was, well, okay, well, what if Joe ain't rapping? What do you think about the three-man group? Nigga, the same thing I always thought about the three-man group. There's no such thing as a three-man group. <laughs> I'm not saying I'm not doing it because Joe got to do it. I'm saying I'm not doing it because everybody got to do it. Right. You know what I mean? Right. But to turn around and paint me as this nigga who just like running behind Joe and shit like that, it's like, nigga, y'all know that that's not the case. You know what I mean? Like there's been times where it's been shows where other members couldn't make it and I didn't want to do those shows the same way. I'm the only member in the group who has done a show with a different member missing. I have experienced a show without Joe, without Joel, and without Crook. I experienced all three different scenarios and none of them felt good. All of them felt like something was missing. So for them to take the position, it's like the, um, it's like the lower archy, so to speak, of the group. That's not really the case. The fans al are always let down when it's somebody missing. They they want to see they want to see everybody. And we knew that when we did all of that work to finally get the brand off of Shady, because that's another thing that they have didn't tell y'all. They didn't tell y'all that all of this time we've been working on taking the brand off of Shady and we just got it off of Shady. Just got it. We had just got it off of Shady. So that so the fact that that move didn't align with what the with the conversations that we were having. That move right there says it all. We had all just got, got took the label off of Shady. We all were having conversations with an attorney. We all were having Zoom calls about what the next move for Slaughterhouse were. And Joe was a part of all of those conversations. Mm. Not at one time did any of them say, yo, I'm a little apprehensive about moving forward because I feel like, Joe, are you really seriously going to rap? Nobody expressed that in those conversations. Everybody was fine, just fine on those conversations. It's the retire because oh, Joe's always said, I'm retired, I'm not doing it. So the way you're painting it, it's like, 
for you guys for the sake of Slaughterhouse, he's ready to go. Yes, so, because because that's just the truth, bro. Got like, you. We're having conversations. We're ha all, everybody's involved in these conversations. It's not like Crooked was busy that day and he didn't get to hear, you know, de these different conversations. Everybody was involved in the conversation. And Joe's position, actually his public position, has always been, I'm retired, I'm not rapping again, but I will consider rapping with Slaughterhouse, but it can't be on Shady Records, and we have to yeah. own it. If we own it, because think about it, Slaughterhouse is something that all four of us got together and collectively built over like a 10-year time, man. It's like the only tangible thing, the only tangible asset that we built and that we have, that we can honestly say that we built it from the mud with really no help. Right. You know what I'm saying? So like... <laughs> Putting it on, putting it on Shady had a lot of perks, and then there was a lot of downside to that as well. To try to continue to scale it in a major label kind of an infrastructure, that was a little bit difficult for us to kind of find that sweet spot. You know what I'm saying? So a lot of Joe's trauma responses to to things that he's been through in the music business and the way that he reacted to things just kind of affected the morale and it affected the business relationship, the working relationship with Shady Records. So the, the, the only logical next step was either to leave it on Shady and let it die on Shady, which why it, would we do that? Or get it off. So we took it, off, we took it off. But understand that when we have to t go in to fight to take it off, that's a Royce the 5'9 fight. That's a Royce the 5'9 fight with my friends. Marshall. Marshall yeah. and Paul. That's a, that's, that's a strain on my relationship with my friends. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, but that's, yeah. that's a sacrifice that I'm willing to take because I have a responsibility to Crooked, Joel, and Joe just from the camaraderie and the things that they have, of, the luxuries that they've have afforded me by grinding with me when we all were just on the internet doing our thing. And you called me and said, yo, why don't y'all do y'all version of Swagger Like Us? And you named every person. It should be you, Joel, Crooked, and Joe. He's telling you I started the group. <laughs> so, so, so when you think about it, when you think about it from that, he's telling you I started the group. I'm telling you, Mecca started, started Slaughterhouse. Just so, so y'all, just so y'all caught that. So when you think you know about right? it, when you think about That's it, why from, I keep him on the show. When you, <laughs> when you think about it, when you think about it from that perspective, um, to allow, to allow, because at that time, if you feel like. You ain't you don't trust that Joe is gonna rap. That's the time to say it right there, and, and you know what? I, I can respect that because I love niggas, and I just walk away, we'll just move on. It's a fight not worth fighting. But if we all agree as a group that we're about to fight that fight, now let's go fight the fight. We went and fought it, and then one they were gracious enough to let us off the label. So now we off the label with somewhat of a strained relationship between me and them. But, but I, that's something I'm willing to put on the line for them. You know what I mean? Right. And I also, I'm also confident in the love as friends that, that you'll me, get back. Paul, and Marshall you'll, have. You'll right. get back. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not really tripping. You know what I'm saying? Like, we've done a lot of, we did Bad Me Seville over there. There's a, lot of, there's a lot of great things that came from me, from us being over there. You know what I mean? But it, it just hit a time where it was time for me to put these different things into perspective. And Slaughterhouse is one of those things that I just felt like, it was something it was something that we needed to be in control of and now we now i feel the same way about prime i'm not gonna let we can do a deal tomorrow with prime on any label you know what i mean and it can work out or it may work out but if it don't work out i just don't think prime is something because of the way in which it was built should ever sit somewhere it should be you know the people who build it should be the ones who say how it falls apart if it's gonna fall apart Smack rapper, only smack rapper that you know is smack rappers. Got bars I can hang with the backpackers. Trap star, I don't hang with the backpackers. I'm in the hood with the work you heard, making fiends sleep earth you heard. Got your baby mama thirst you heard. Feel the flow, nigga, throw it in reverse. This the way you need to surf you heard.